uh, I love the fact that video games adaptation are kind of big now, right? Like uh, Halo was renewed for a second season very early, and then there's The Last of Us, there's Sonic, that's Five Nights at Freddy's. So looking at all of these uh, amazing works, do you guys think uh, video games adaptations are the next big thing in Hollywood? I think we're already past the next big thing. I think they're I think they're here to stay, yeah. uh, and and the bugaboo of of you know not being able to do them successfully has I think been taken away. Um, so yeah, it's I'm curious and excited to see which games come next. Yes. Yeah, I hope so, because I, I love games, <laughs> and, and you know I yeah I, I want to see more of it. I think there's that we've sort of broken the, uh, the the stigma about them and I think that, that they're being done well now and I'm, I'm excited to be a part of that. I mean we have a lot more coming too, right? We have Minecraft which starts production soon, Fallout right around the corner. Um, and these are franchises that people love. I mean like the thing coming from the game side that I love is these are like worlds and characters we've invested so much time in either as creators or players and to be able to explore that in a different way and experience it in a different way as an audience is incredibly exciting. So I don't see any reason why that would slow down. Uh, yeah, and I would just say as like someone who tells stories what video games have provided us, especially as they've grown, is more and more complex rules and worlds and more and more interesting possibilities in terms of how we look at futurism and how we experience a world, right? So. Mm -hmm. um, it's different, it's a different kind of storytelling, but the spirit of Halo or the spirit of any of these other games is kind of the key thing that you want to capture when you go to adapt it. Mm -hmm. And Halo is a very interesting case because uh, Hollywood wanted to explore Halo for decades now, like in the early 2000s, right? So uh, what made the stars align this time that we could get this awesome TV show? I mean, Kiki has been with it forever, so she yeah, would know that. It took a long history. time for the stars to align. <laughs> the interest in Halo was early, and in some ways, I think, before either games or Hollywood was sort of ready to get their heads around the complexity of adapting, mm -hmm. right? Because it's a hugely complex um, process, deciding what direction you want to go in, you know, how close to the canon you want to be, or whether you want to explore other parts of of the storytelling and so um, it's been a long journey. Um, we had incredible partners with Showtime and Paramount and Amblin mm -hmm. um, who stuck with it, right? Um, until we were able to get the right creatives on board mm -hmm. um, and really figure out what it would take to bring it to life. There's no way of telling how many escaped. And uh, what's your relation to the Halo universe and video games? Uh, do you guys uh, did you guys enjoy the games? How is it? I did. I I played the games growing up, uh, the first three, and then um, I played Halo Reach when I was um, prepping just to to be a part of that world again because it was one I hadn't played. And yeah, I, I loved them. You know, they were they're ingrained as a part of my um, my life. I had a more peripheral uh, relationship to video games. I didn't have video games growing up. Um, played a couple times at friends' houses, you know, uh, before getting the job. But getting the job for me was a real eye-opening experience because I got taken up to Seattle and got to see the Halo Museum. Uh, got through, went through boot camp with 343, and you know, quickly realized, obviously, when I got the job, how how much it meant to so many people. It was an appreciation for story that really dragged me into to my entranceway to. to the franchise. You've been to Brazil before, so you know that the Halo community here in Brazil is not nearly as big as in the US. It's very yeah. passionate, but not yeah. nearly as big. Yeah. But since you've been here in 2012 and now you're here in 2023, uh, did you notice that the community grew? And if it grew, uh, did the TV show had had any part in that growth? Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely grown. Like you can feel, you can feel the difference. I think it was the first time Xbox came to to Brazil Game Show back in 2012. Um, and now if you go and look at the Xbox booth, right, it's mm -hmm. it's thriving. But I do think like one of the goals of the show was to bring in new audience into Halo and to introduce that world um, mm -hmm. to more people. So absolutely, I think that's part of, of the Halo energy we're feeling from Brazil, which we love. How do you 
describe your character, uh, James Ackerson, because he's a very interesting figure in the Halo universe, mm -hmm. right? So what can you say about him? He's been painted as a, a villain sometimes, but I, I think that Ackerson uh, ultimately has the greater good of humanity. You know, that's his priority. He will make necessary sacrifices if he has to, to ensure that. You know, that means there are some conflicts and there are, he butts heads with a few people. But uh, I, th I think ultimately there is an integrity to him, you know, because he truly believes what he's doing is right. That's very ominous. <laughs> <laughs> it was just my delivery. <laughs> it could have been. It's, it's the accent. accent. Yeah. It's yes. <laughs>